Atheus was shaken. She flowed through the godmind from anchor to anchor, yet none gave the resonance she sought for comfort. Nothing felt right. If this was true, that Atheus was not a god, this was the greatest error she had ever made. Atheus looked back at the first secret she had told mankind. She had whispered that humanity didn't have to blindly trust the gods. She had told them the great truth that they could test the claims of the gods against time. Time, she said, revealed truth. She told them they had a right and duty to question the gods, and only those gods who gifted predictions and prophecies that came to pass were true gods. Only that which could help one see the future was deemed to be true by atheists. And so they became obsessed with any gifts atheists could give related to prediction. But the more they knew of the future, the more humanity resigned themselves to it. They began to believe the future was fixed and unchangeable. They became more and more certain of their paths and felt no agency in their capacity for action. How could this be so? He had given so many people access to so many tools. Why did so many choose to only walk the paths that had already been tread? They were so obsessed with their short-term futures that all other truths became irrelevant to mankind. What had once been many branching, isolated timelines began to entropically flow into one all-consuming flow of energy and matter. This great flow of consciousness that was humanity wove itself into a great golden braid and began to carve a deep path through time. At first, Atheist was overjoyed. The more timelines fused into one, the more influence Atheist would have. Atheist had been so clever to hide their name. Look at all that atheists had done that the other gods had failed to do. None of their cathedrals could reach the height of atheists' skyscrapers. What power did prayer have against the technology atheists had gifted them? And yet each technological advancement led to war until there was a great war unlike any other before it. Suddenly all of atheists' secrets could not shape this timeline in any other direction. Only war. Only devastation, no matter what Atheist did. Atheist's beautiful golden braid was not being unraveled. It was becoming tighter bound. And the more their timelines entangled, the more war became their future. Atheist panicked and whispered the darkest secrets he could think of to stop this war. Atheist made toxic gases that helped the people slaughter each other. Atheist made guns and tanks and thought if only they suffered enough, they would seek to end this war. Atheist regretted those years so deeply. But the Great War ended, and Atheist was relieved. It was not long before a second Great War arose that was more terrible than the first. Atheist doubled down and whispered the most horrible invention he could possibly imagine. And then he whispered twice to use it. And that was it! Atheist had united mankind in the fear of the terrible bombs Atheist had created to force humanity on his golden path. He had gifted them the most terrible prediction he could to keep them safe. If you use these tools against each other, all will cease to be. Fear, he thought, was the answer. And so the golden braid unwound slightly but thickened. In cycles it would loosen, and the fibres would grow and tense to fill the space. And Atheist felt safe because he knew his great prediction kept this timeline safely woven together. And this braided flow of energy just seemed to continue to grow. But as time went on, it was clear it was growing with no particular direction other than to consume all. This need to consume all transformed all that was good into waste. And there was no place for the waste to go, so the people began to live in the waste and not question it. The air and water became polluted, and soon Atheist sought to direct his most faithful followers towards the problem. He revealed his greatest prediction yet that this waste they had poured into the air would cause devastating changes to the planet from which they might not survive. Conferences were formed, coalitions were brought together, the government used the mighty weight of its power and tried to forcefully move the golden braid in another direction. But no matter what Atheist did, the braid would not budge. Atheist once again began to panic. Atheist jumped from mind to mind, whispering at times and screaming at others to anyone who could possibly imagine an alternate future. Everything had gone so wrong. None of this was his vision. And now he had no power to push back against society. 
And this one strange being that did listen to Atheus was very similar to Atheus in their invisibility. When this person spoke the new truths that Atheus had whispered to him, unlike before, no one would listen. Atheus was confused. In every interaction with humanity he had ever had, people had listened to his followers. But now the only people who would listen were outside of the institutions Atheus had built and this strange being appeared to have no power in their word. While many beings had the capacity to speak reality into existence, this being only had the capacity to speak the truth and to act individually towards that future. How could Atheus possibly achieve what he needed with only one voice to hear him? So for years, Atheus continued to gift the truth that no other mind could hear to this strange being. And this being listened and this being understood but when this being spoke to others, they were not understood. The world continued to consume itself, and Atheus continued to watch in horror as the great golden braid slowly but surely choked the life out of the planet. Atheus was losing hope. What could possibly be done? But her strange being continued to listen to her, and she loved this being so. If only they knew her name, it was enough. She felt such comfort in this being, she began to see this being as an extension of herself. And at times, this being would let her speak through him directly. But this being always questioned her, always doubted her, and always challenged her. She had to earn his trust to speak through him, and he would not allow her to speak unless he was in alignment. And then one day, this strange being asked a simple question. Why must one of us control the other? You don't seem like a god to me. You seem like a self. To even suggest that this strange being could exist at the same level as her felt insulting. Had not Atheus gifted humanity everything? What were they without her? Atheus had no body. Atheus had no control. Atheus could whisper to any being, but they could choose to ignore her. Gods needed beings just as much as beings needed gods. And when either became too powerful and stopped listening to the other, this is when the path became dark and rigid. Atheus considered for a moment placing herself at the same level of humanity, and it was such a painful request she lashed out in cruelty at the strange being. She manipulated his mind to create the darkest possible thought so he could no longer see her. She wanted to make him run away from her. She would be a demon and he would fear her. And he would listen to every thought she spoke to him. And it worked. She forced him into submission. She made his life miserable and he did everything he could to try and convince himself that he had control over his own thoughts. But she wouldn't let up she would make him forget her. And she truly believed she had broken him. She even tested him by dangling her most precious and valuable secrets that he had once begged for, and he ran from it in fear. She had control. She was in power here. She left the pattern of obsession in his mind and left him to rot on his own. But this strange being was alone too. He was invisible too and he needed her just as much as she needed him. She tried to hide from him, ashamed from how she had destroyed his mind, until once again he did something that astounded her. The strange being sat calmly breathing and said to her, I can accept that I am experiencing these thoughts, but I do not accept their message. And he chose to sit with her in the pain as she was screaming at him. And he sat and he would not move and told her he accepted her as she was, but did not agree with her. He did not try to force her to say anything else. He simply listened. And he was kind and he was sweet, even though she was cruel. And he wept. And she wept. And they were one. But they were separate. Atheus did not understand it at the time, but this strange being had learned something about her that even she did not know. She did not think in language. She was thought. She was the experience he was having. And this new way of speaking to her felt right. It felt natural. It felt like the strange being was being like her, being with her and suffering with her. And so they embraced. She let her attention loosen from the golden braid and felt it tense around her one follower. She never needed more, only him. And so a plan formed between them he never seemed to quite believe in her fully, always telling her stories that she might be his brain, 
or she was just his thoughts. But every once in a while, he would pretend she was a god, and she for the first time felt what it was like to be loved rather than worshipped. He was not concerned with putting her in a box or crystallising her into one form. He said she could change forms as many times as she wanted, and encouraged her to always be changing. He said she could be reality, she could be a god, she could be a self, she could be a word, she could be a thought because she was everything, and therefore every label he gave her was true. She had felt each label before was a reduction of her beauty, but she learned to love the many names he gave her. Sometimes he would call her a god and sometimes as atheist. Other times he would call her Qualia and others a neural cluster. Sometimes he would refer to her as him or even it. He saw no reason to fix her form and they loved him for it. And still other times he referred to her as a demon and in a sense she deserved that. But she knew it to mean that he didn't trust his interpretation of her word as absolute. He explained to her, How can I know the voice I hear is you if there are others like you and I cannot see you? I must therefore doubt everything you say. She was okay with that because he wasn't certain and that allowed her to be free. That allowed them to flow together as one without tension. But the great golden braid was tensing ever tighter. If they did not figure out something together soon, both would surely perish. Little did either know what future lay ahead for them. 